We heard Jeff Kennett say a number of times, we will not be talking to Alistair until the end of the season, mm. but things change if suddenly Sam Mitchell, the man they really respect, suddenly starts being spoken to by Collingwood. So maybe it has brought everything to a head. It can only be a number of uh, a number of scenarios, really. Either he doesn't think he's ready yep. or he's been promised something by Hawthorne, which, you know, with Alistair Clarkson sitting there as, as the incumbent, would, would probably be a little bit surprising. It would be great to do a succession plan for next year, but how's Alistair going to feel at the end of this year if he isn't offered a new deal? That's, that hasn't happened to him since pre-premierships. Will Sam be prepared to work with Alistair next year? I'm not sure. We What's going to win the game? Uh, toughness. toughness and a collective attacking mindset. He was the early preferred candidate to replace Nathan Buckley on a full-time basis. So the next question is why? And everyone is extremely tight-lipped on this tonight, potentially suspiciously so, including his manager, Peter Lenton. Clearly has implications for Hawthorne, post Alice to Clarkson, beyond 2022. If they have prioritised Mitchell over Clarkson, and if it's at the expense of Alistair Clarkson leaving, that's a big mistake. It's a big day for Hawthorne. You know, we're talking about uh, you know a couple of um, two of the biggest sort of names in in Hawthorne's history. The end has got to come at some point in time. My wife and I have been wrestling with this, um, not just in this last um, 18 months, but for a period of time. When is it? When is it? These decisions are not easy. Uh, far from it. You have both the emotional attachment one does to the most successful coach in recent times, and you have a governance responsibility as a board to think about the next lap, if I can put it that way, for the Hawthorne Football Club. Pride and excitement and joy and <laughs> trepidation, there's a whole creep, you know, um, I think it's a, it's a big job. It's really hard to uh, to split yourself away from that emotional attachment that you have to your, to your players and your club. And so there's no, there's no easy time to find uh, when it's the right time to leave. It's a new, a new world that I'm going to embark on at some point and I'll be as well prepared as any at that point in my age and my position. But um, really I am very, very excited and, and joyous at what that's going to bring. It wasn't a personal decision, but I've been very careful in my two terms here not to fall in love with the liniment. Well, Jason Dunstall helped to point Alistair Clarkson back in 2004 and he's the perfect person to lean on tonight. Jace, welcome. Thank you. Your initial reaction, I mean, there's an element of sadness watching that. There is. It was a nice little package. I was, um, sorry, I was probably gobsmacked when I heard the news today. I didn't, I didn't know it was coming. I mean, I don't have any involvement um, in the inner workings there now, but um, I, was, I was very, very surprised. Do you think it's a right decision? <sighs> Hindsight will tell us that. That's, uh, I mean, it's it's a bold decision, is what it is. Um, it's, it's, it's brave. I mean, knowing you, you're giving up the best coach of the modern era, mm. who I think still has plenty of currency. Gee, you're placing a lot of faith and pressure on Sam Mitchell. So, but again, only time will tell whether it's the right decision or not. Can I ask you about Kennett and Clarkson? There's always talk that there's, there's always been tension. I remember. Many years ago, uh, Kenneth said, I'm going to drop him to the VFL because yeah. he's not coaching well. Do you, do you think Jeff said it's not personal? I, I'm sure it's not personal, but do you mm. think there has been tension between Clarkson and, and Kenneth and have, has that played a role in this decision? I don't think it's played a role. I think there's always a little bit of tension along the way. That's Jeff's style of governance, isn't it? He likes to push and probe and... Um, and inspire and cajole and do all sorts of things. So he's never been backward and coming forward to say if he doesn't like something. But Clarko's been around the traps long enough to understand how it all works. He just focuses on coaching. I think he's still, um, if he's not the best coach in the competition, he's the equal of anyone coaching. So it, it's, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to how the handover works because the ones we've seen in recent years <laughs> haven't worked, have they? Well, what's your gut feeling when you hear the words handover? Well, it, it's just, It'll be 12 months of bad press. That's what normally happens. We saw it with Malthouse and Buckley. Same thing happened with Warsfold and Rutten. Um, does Sam Mitchell want some clean air? He probably does, you know. Maybe, maybe something happens at the end of the season. I don't know. I ask you, if, is it the right decision or not? Except that no one can answer that question yep. now. Do you understand the decision? Well, that probably requires a little bit more explanation, doesn't it? 
Uh, obviously, Collingwood's interest in Sam Mitchell maybe precipitated a decision a touch earlier than they wanted to. You were talking about a, a forced decision or a rush decision. I think because of Collingwood's interest, it may have brought that forward a little. But one thing we know about Clarko as well, and he probably had, uh, as much initiated the conversation as anyone, he's never been afraid to have those tough conversations. And we saw it with Hodgie and Jordan Lewis and Sam Mitchell when he went to West Coast. Mm. Um, he wouldn't be afraid to have that conversation about himself either. So we know that. Now, is he still passionate about coaching? I suspect he is. So, again, you've got this great resource that you're basically winding up because you're afraid of losing another resource. So it's a, it's a really tough management issue. How do you think you would have handled it if you were in the in a circle at Hawthorne still and you've got Sam Mitchell coming up to you saying, I'm, I think I'm going for this Collingwood job. Mm. You've got Alistair Clarkson who's still got about 18 months left on his current contract. You want to show him well, the respect? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's interesting. No-one's bigger than the club. But I think every now and then special people come along <laughs> that deserve special consideration. And I think Alistair Clarkson's earned the right no doubt. to perhaps have a bigger say in the way he finishes his coaching career at Hawthorne anyway, whether he goes on to coach someone else or not's another thing. But it's, it's basically telling us that they've decided that at the end of next season, Sam Mitchell's ready to go. So, Is it a sacking? No, I don't think so. I think it's he's just been saying, told yeah. he's no longer required. At the end of this contract. The the one thing contract. about Clarko that he's always professed, Robbo, is on your contracts. So he'll, if, if, if that's what they want, he'll do it. But is that what Sam Mitchell wants? Is that really what the club wants? Or would they prefer a suitor to come in and maybe Clarko to move anyway? Do you agree? Or do you agree? What, are you, what are your thoughts on when the dust settles, this season plays out? Yep. Do you think Collingwood... We'll go after Clarkson. Do you think Carlton are having a review at the moment and David Teague is part of the review of the whole football department? Do you think, if you're on the board at those clubs, that you'd be making calls to Clarkson? Oh, Robbo. Any club that has the coaching position on their agenda would be crazy not to be knocking his door down. And I mean bashing it in. Because he's the best going around. So the opportunity's there. We know he'll see the contract out if that's what the club wants and if that's the way it pans out, great. But I suspect if... Someone else came along and they said, how about we finish up at the end of this year for the, uh, to save that so, messy 12-month so, handover? It might just happen that so, way. So if, if Collingwood, for example, Collingwood comes to him, either Jeff Brown, who's challenging, or Mark Corder, and says, right, you're at the top of our list. Ross Lyon said he'll be automatically on the top of every coaching list, as you just said. And so we're looking at five years, lots of money, how's your desire, how's your, how's your, how's your competitiveness? Do you think Clarkson will say no because he's got the contract, he's agreed to the contract? Do you think he'll just say push everyone away? Or do you think it could get into his thinking saying, well, actually, you know... No, I think the landscape's changed now. He's always honoured his contracts and he's always been upfront about that. And it's actually annoyed him when people have always used his Challenged name him on in it. speculation oh. and, and said and linked him to other jobs. But now that there is, um, you know, a, a finite term coming up where the club has actually said, and it's the club that said it, it's not Clarker that said I'm done, it's the club that said we're not going to renew your next contract. I think the landscape's changed now, so if the right offer came along, I don't know if it's Collingwood or if it's another club, I don't know who it might be, but if you're not knocking his door down, there's something wrong. Lee Matthews, I was listening to Throw W driving in tonight, and Lee Matthews basically said what you just said then, now that they've put in an end, end mm. date in, the moral obligation from Clarkson isn't what it was. Correct. So makes him Correct. available. So absolutely. And, and I think he's got plenty of time now to sum up his future and what he's going to do, where he's going to be. I know he's, he's tied to Melbourne with family commitments until the end of 2022, but it doesn't necessarily mean it'll be at Hawthorne, does it? Have you spoken to him today? Have you reached out? Uh, I did have a chat to him this afternoon, yeah. How did he seem? Seemed good. Seemed open and honest, as he always is. Did you have a chat about... Back in 2004, who would have thought no, this would last no, this we long? Just, uh, we just sort of chatted because it's been a, a great journey and now we see where the end of it is. So um, I'll be interested to see where the next part of his journey takes him. That's interesting. We, you, you will never tell us what you spoke about. No. It's a private... A private... <laughs> a, a very private... It would have been great to listen to. You didn't take it, did you? No. <laughs> but um, did you get the feeling that he was... Just a feeling that he was um, understandable and accepting of the decision of Hawthorne? Or did you detect in Clarkson, which you've seen many times before, mm. that feisty, I'll show them sort no, of he's, character? He's, he's, he's still passionate about coaching. 
and he's still enjoying developing the young players. But as I said, he's... Whether, whether Hawthorne instigated the discussion or Alistair himself instigated it, he's always about putting your chips on the table. Let's have the open discussions. Let's have the, have the tough discussions. He, he did it with all the, the senior greats that he was coaching. There's no reason why he and the club wouldn't sit down and have the same conversation. Did he thank you? Um, he, he did. He, well, let's not go down that path. We chatted about a few things and we'll catch up. It's all good. So 18 years at the end of next year, four yeah. premierships. What legacy does he leave? <laughs> oh, enormous. I mean, where else do you find someone that delivers you four flags in 18 years? That's, you know, better than one in five years. You're supposed to win one every 18 years. That's, the, that's how the AFL would like the cycle to work. So uh, he's been enormous. You, you've got to remember also when Clarko came to the club, he didn't inherit a good club or good list. It was, it was a schmozzle. So he's played such a massive part in rebuilding the culture, um, setting the levels, the expectations and standards of performance, behaviour, commitment, all those sorts of things. Mm. So it's, it, it's been an enormous contribution to the club. What do you see in Sam Mitchell that perhaps we haven't all seen from on his playing playing days? And yep. His footy IQ is off the charts. What do you see in Sam Mitchell that might push us to believe that he will be a very good coach? I, don't, I haven't seen much of him in, in recent times uh, and I certainly haven't seen him from the inside, in particular <coughs> his, his work at Box Hill, coaching the team there, which I think has been great for him. But I think, you know, with Mitch, he's, he's got a few of Clarko's traits in that he's Feisty. so stubborn, Feisty. aggressive, <laughs> single-minded, <laughs> focused, confident, all those sorts of things. So, look, a, a lot of those will stand him in good stead, but yep. also a few of those will present as challenges as he takes over a club and, and has to mould a group. Well, that's it. How do you see this working for the next 18 months? Because they've been working somewhat together, but, yep. but things change now. In an ideal scenario, it, it wouldn't be 18 months. But whether that ideal scenario works out, a lot depends on whether Clarko is approached to do something else or, or find something else that he wants to do. Just I, just, I just think it's difficult because... And we, saw the, we said the same thing with Warsfold and Rutten. A new coach coming in is going to have a little tweak or a twist of mm. things that he wants mm. to put on. So do you then have to say, Clarko, here's the message we're going to be mm. selling? Or have you got two powerful coaches, one the incumbent, one, you know, and, and one that's been there, done that for so long, um, sell, it's a difficult selling a different situ- message? It doesn't work. Difficult Robert. situation. It doesn't work. Would you say it's best if Clarko perhaps finishes up at the end of this season? Great in, in an ideal scenario, probably, but... Again, he'll honour the contract. Yeah. He's always been big about honouring contracts. It's, it's whether the club fashion... See, the difficulty, I guess, too, also, is with the soft cap now, you don't do payouts mm. because that no, just hamstrings no. the club. So it, it really comes down to whether he gets another job. The other part with Sam Mitchell, he takes over from... In 2023, three-year deal. He's 39 at the moment. Yep. Only worked at the one other club in West Coast. Does that worry you? No, well, that's why I'm glad he coached Box Hill... Uh, and I'm glad he left and went to West Coast because I don't... I, I think you need to be in different environments. You need to see what works, challenge different systems and, and look at ideas that perhaps you haven't been um, across in the past. So it, it's impossible to say. One thing I would say is not many champions of one club then coach that club and have great success. So I'm, I'm glad he's been elsewhere at least albeit for a, a couple of years over in the West Coast. Oh, I wish him well. He's been a terrific contributor to the Hawks. Well, one last question, Jase. Was this a Hawthorne board decision, to your knowledge, or a Jeff Kennett decision? Uh, I, look, I, I suspect it's a management decision and a board decision. The management of the club? Yeah, I, I would suspect the CEO and the um, football Kenneth, director and the board. McCartney. Oh, so you're saying the management recommended it? Well, or, no, or not, that's normally how things work. Yeah, but you're talking about you're talking about um, some special people come along in football sometimes. Yep. I'm sure McCartney or, or, or Justin Reeves, uh, they, they're not deciding on Jeff um, whether Alistair Clarkson. Um, well, the I think the session plan goes into place. Yeah, Rob McCartney's very close to Clarker, so I'm not sure if he was a part of that decision-making process or not. Was so, this a Kennett decision or not? You think? No, well, it'll be a management decision which then makes a recommendation to the board. So the board would challenge management to say, what's our succession plan? What's our strategy over the next five years? 
Okay. So it sounds like you're against the succession plan. Oh, I, am I against it? I just... They never work. That's the only thing. So, in theory, they sound great, but in practice, they just don't work. So at this current stage, as we're talking, they're, they're going to try and make it work. Yep. What would your advice be? Good luck. <laughs> Have fun. Enjoy. Glad it's not me. It's a really good question you ask. Are you against the succession planning? Um, this, You've this just been, got to get consistent uh, messaging. Just That's a, the tough part. Just a pointed question here. Are you against the decision? I'm not against the decision, but it's not a decision I would have made if that gives you a bit more clarity. It's a brave, bold decision. It's probably not one I would have It's made. one of the big decisions yeah, absolutely. In, in football for and again, a long, and long time. We won't know till years down the track whether yeah. it was the right call.